When it comes to annealing your cases, sometimes there are more questions than answers. Most folks are happy to tell you, this is the way I do it. But why? Because it was what worked best for them. Or did they even test it? Today we're going to look at some annealing data and hopefully answer a couple of these long-asked questions like, if I anneal a piece of brass twice, is it ruined? And when should I anneal, before or after the sizing process? To keep everything as consistent as possible, today everything was annealed on my amp annealer. Aztec mode was used to generate custom annealing codes for this lot of brass, which is once fired Hornady brass. The story behind this video is largely another video done by the amp annealing guys. In that video, Alex shows essentially the same brass hardness after a case is annealed the second time on the same setting. This really surprised me and honestly got me thinking. If I can anneal the same case two times and it doesn't get too soft, then why not anneal once before the full length size and then again after to relieve any of the work hardness that's done by the sizing process. So first things first, we took our unsized case and generated an Aztec code of 134. In case you're not familiar, the basics of it here, the higher the number, the more energy is used to anneal the brass. A fun comparison of my lop or brass of the same caliber is around 151. For any of you that might not be familiar with this machine, it uses induction annealing. So after I size the brass, it's slightly smaller, and I was concerned this might affect the proper code, and it did. How I found out is I sacrificed a second case, and lo and behold, the Aztec code that was generated was 0130. I tested two groups, one annealed once, full length sized, 262 expander mandrel, and trimmed a length. The other group is exactly the same, except for prior to trimming, one additional anneal was performed with the 0130 annealing code on my annealer. Then it was trimmed. And after that, it's all the same. Primer, powder, and projectile. This is 6.5 Creedmoor. We use the 140 grain ELDM. I'm using 41.3 grains of H4350 and the CCI 250 primer. And the cartridge overall length is 2.820 inches. All these rounds were seated on my amp press, and this is where we saw the first really big change. Completely opposite of what I thought. The seating force is so much higher on the brass that was annealed twice. Not just a little. Instead of the force maxing out around 120 pounds, it went all the way to 175 pounds on average. And some of the cases maxed out the press, which I had set to 190 pounds. Certainly not what I expected at all. Clearly the second anneal made a dimension slightly different or burned more carbon out of the case, but certainly there was more friction. I can't be 100% sure what happened, but certainly this is not what I expected. But what everyone will want to know is the accuracy and statistics, right? Well, when looking at our velocity, we would expect higher neck tension to translate to higher velocity. And it did. Our control group with only the one anneal gave us our average velocity of 27.78 versus the two times anneal brass was 27.87. Now this is only about 10 feet per second on average, but it is a difference. Interestingly enough though, when we look at extreme spread and standard deviation, the extreme spread on both was 51 feet per second. However, the standard deviation on the one-time annealed brass was slightly lower at 12.2 versus 13.2. But what about the group size? Our control group with only one anneal had a 15-shot group of 0.91 MOA. Overall, a better way of looking at it in my opinion, especially when we do this comparison, is mean radius. The mean radius of this control group was 0.28 MOA. If you pay attention to the way the shots are fired, you will see the first 10 and shot 13 all actually went into a 0.66 MOA group with a mean radius of 0.24 MOA. So maybe barrel heat was starting to be a factor, but either way, it doesn't really matter because the two times anneal brass is what was the most surprising. Looking at our 15 shot group, our group size is 1.03 MOA and the mean radius was all the way up to 0.37 MOA. Just looking at the group size overall, it's clear that the twice anneal brass just did not perform as well. Hands down, there's not one change or two changes or four changes, which is going to make that look any better. Overall, the group is just over an MOA, but it's all over the place. Why did things turn out this way? I wonder if the additional anneal is somehow changing the internal surface finish of the case neck. But whatever it's doing, it certainly is not improving the performance. Maybe if we'd run a mandrel through the neck after the second anneal, things would look slightly different. Besides annealing, another big thing that people are always talking about is neck turning. If you want to know if neck turning can help your reloads become more consistent, check out this video right here. And until next week, stay safe in small groups.